Hi guys, welcome back to Bandai's 148 scale ATST. Uh, unfortunately, my camera decided not to work and record any of the pre shading that I did. Um, and I'm showing you here uh, the colour that I'm going to be using, which is the Vlado model there, as you can see, RLM 76. Now, the reason I'm talking over this is because my camera has also decided to stop recording sound at this point. So not only is it completely missed the pre-shading, which was done in a, a darker grey, which for the life of me at the moment I can't quite remember. Um, hopefully there's a little caption just appeared underneath to remind myself of that and help you guys out. Um, fast forwarding through the actual spraying at the moment of doing this, um, purely because there's no sound. I was actually talking through this, and again, I can't remember what I was actually saying at the time. But... Um, working quite close with a lower pressure of air than I normally would use and the whole idea of this top coat that I'm doing at the moment is to keep most of that pre-shading which is actually heavier than I would normally use to begin with because uh, I want a splotchy effect uh, to the overall paintwork which will hopefully become clearer in a minute um, yeah, I was disappointed with this this camera not recording sound this time around. There you go. You can probably see uh, it's looking really splotchy, which is going to help with the the weathering afterwards. And I'm probably talking through something like that now with the wavy hand. And then we're going through the actual rebuild of the leg. Um, it's probably saw from the last video. I had actually built it um, in between shifts at work, and as you can see, it's a, a really good snap fit. And wiggle the camera around. The camera's actually based on um, lampshade stands, you know, the movable ones like the Pixar uh, emblem. Uh, I think that one was actually for a microphone. Oh, here I'm showing you the tabs that line up inside the, I think that's the knee joint. This piece here is actually a locking tab, uh, as you can see from the length of that shaft. Um, it fits in there um, on the socket part and there's actually an interchangeable part with the shorter piece which is actually installed in my right hand at the moment as you can see under there so it's like half the size the one that's in the right hand at the moment there actually lets the knee joint move as I've just demonstrated whereas if you leave the long shaft in it actually locks the knee completely so you can't pose it I hope that made sense. There you go. That's the moving knee joint. Whereas if you put the long shaft in, it locks that knee. So we'll go straight back into the painting of it. And typically the boiler packs in behind me, kicks in even. So I'm hoping this comes through clear and you don't understand what I'm saying. And we go back in with the spray and blowing parts everywhere off camera. That was quite fun trying to find everything again. So, like I said, we go through the the spray on fast forward. As you can probably see, it's not the the greatest paint job in the world. Like I say, I'm going for a splotchy effect, uh, which will help with the shading afterwards, all the weathering and stuff like that. It was a really good build, this. I really enjoyed it. And there's the rest of the leg parts coming back together. I think this is the right leg I'm using at the moment. That's the centre chassis. And then these are the smaller ancillary parts for the leg. And there's a little, little ball and socket joint here. And then the tabs line up a specific way, so the, the, this piece here can only go one way to start with. And first time around building this, I actually put that one upside down. I'm thinking, why doesn't that fit? And then I realised. 
because I was being silly. There you go, that way round. And hopefully you can see in there the tabs and the sockets and the pegs and whatnot. And then show the people what you're doing, Tony. That would help. Put the toe the right way around, that would help too. And hopefully you can see the, the difference between the shades of grey that I'm using as well. And there's a really dodgy job about 50 shades that needs to be done there, but I'm not going to. I'll leave that to you, uh, your imaginations. And then the bits box comes back in. Somewhere? There he is. No, it's not. That's the instructions. Silly boy. I think at this point I'm reconfirming to myself how it goes. Which I get wrong, as you will see in a second. The instructions, again, are really straightforward to understand. Even though there's no English on there whatsoever, you can see the Japanese symbols there. Um, they're just pretty much foolproof. So, that's the hip. As you're about to say, I'm going to get this the wrong way around. That's the best part about these kits, with them being snap fit, if you do make a, a mistake like I'm about to, uh, it's easily rectified. I get it wrong in a second or two, honest. So this part's okay, it's the next part. I'm about to put on this one now. It can only go one way. That's not the mistake. This is the mistake now. That piece should actually go on first, as you're about to see. Honest. That's a really long build up this one. Right, get this piece off. There we go. Yes. Uh, that one goes first. And then this one. Because there's a slight tab on the right hand side. As I vaguely remember explaining here, that it lies that way around. Yeah, silly boy. Come back in with the paint and fill the blanks in. Like so. At this point, I'm using a really, really low pressure because I'm working so close to the piece that I'm spraying. Uh, I don't want a massive, great big whoosh of paint to come out, which I've made that mistake many, many times in the past, and you do learn. It takes quite a few efforts, but you do get there. Uh, I think I said this in the, the first video too, this isn't exactly uh, how to do this. This is more of uh, an overview at the moment. What I will be doing is, I think it's going to be in the next video, um, I'm working on the inside of the cockpit, so I'll be doing a how-to then. But this bit's pretty much getting it done and you know the basic first steps and things like that. So just finish that right leg and this is going to be the left leg I think. And it's practically more of the same. And I'm actually watching this at the same time as you on my editing program. Editing editing? Editing program. And flopping like mad because I can't remember what I did. So I'm just going to have a quick scan through and see what's what. Yeah, if that's more of the same, yeah. There's probably about 4,000 people, no, two people watching this thinking, that's not how you spray. That's not how you do it. Mm. So 
So it's literally a really light coat of RLM 76, I think it was. Um, somewhere, I do have uh, The Arts of Star Wars, a Return of the Jedi book. Uh, it came out about 15 years ago now, something like that, with the, the re edition, re jiggied special edition things that came out. Um, and there's hardly any photos in there of the ATST or old chicken bombs as I've started calling him. Uh, and there you go again. Watch out for which way around they go. Um, but it does appear to be a blue grey colour, which is around right, 76 all day long. Uh, if I remember rightly, that's actually one of the three colours. Is it three colours? On the F16. I think it's the lightest of them all on the underside. It's a gorgeous colour, it really is. Just be careful with the uh, with this part as well, because as you're about to see, that should have gone on first. Silly bloke. Oh yeah, um, everything I've been able to find so far on the ATSC, it does appear to be a blue grey rather than a grey grey. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, that prime coat you got there is a, a neutral grey. As you probably see from that thigh section, yeah, just above my left hand, there is a difference between the, the two shades. Uh, fiddle, 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 fiddle. It's actually a lot less complicated than I'm, I'm making it to be here. Oh dear. Yeah, there's um, there's a little palsy top there as well to be aware of. So it's not quite as articulated as uh, the Gundam kits appear to be. Um, I've not made one of those for years and years and years. But my uh, my good buddy, the model making guru, uh, the incredibly talented Mr. Fox, he's just done a commission build and he's got a uh, video updates on his YouTube channel. Uh, links in the, are in the description, hopefully. Um, I've made the Bandai Stormtrooper, which is basically a Gundam kit in a Stormtrooper pose, uh, uniform thing. And they are incredibly articulate. But this thing, so it's, it moves, but it's not a great deal. Um, I'll be able to show you that in later videos when the rest of the chassis is put together. I'll come around to doing the actual weather inside of things. Um, so it's quite disappointing with that. It's not as dynamic as it could have been. But I'm sure uh, if anybody's got a little bit more experience with these kind of things than I have, I should imagine you should be able to cut the some of the tabs away and make a proper pose of this thing. That's possibly uh, a project for the future. I might buy another one of these and try that. And then more of the same, blending the, uh, the added bits in together. Now you can see where I wear gloves as well. So I'm constantly checking the flow, and rather than moving away to a piece of paper, it's easier to do it on the thumb there, as you can see. Probably not good practice, but it works for me. Now the worst thing about this build. It's not the kit itself, it's the lack of time I've had. Um, backwards and forwards in my real life to work and my girlfriends. So I'm in with um, Dragon. I'm in Manchester, she's in Warrington. So it's backwards and forwards all the time. Um, and then work. I've 
been doing a ridiculous amount of work again at the moment. It's March, it's audit time. And everybody and the dog wants to audit us or they want audits for themselves. And the department I work for, we ship a lot of stuff out so they can check what they've got rather than coming to us to do it. Well, never mind. So it's been ridiculously busy. I've barely had any time to myself all the way through March. It's crackers. So this build and these videos are actually being done in like 20 minutes stints. Uh, these legs, even though it's what, literally about half an hour of video, these legs were actually done over three nights, believe it or not. Like I say, it's literally grabbing 20 minutes in between. And all the running around. That's something I haven't quite lined up on this part. As you can see, from the gap there at the top, and all of a sudden, click, he went in, and there you go. Everything's moving now. I'm going to stay at that base. I really don't like that base. That's something I'm definitely going to work on. Um, there you go, test it on my knuckle again. And do some more blending. Um, yeah, that base is definitely going to be changed. I'll definitely go to town with some tabletop gaming type things that, like I used to do when I was a kid, uh, which is how I got started in this hobby. It's, you know, originally, um, I used to do a lot of Games Workshop stuff, like Warhammer and 40k and stuff like that. I love the painting and modelling side of it. For the life of me, I couldn't play that game. Still can't understand it now. Ah, the right then chassis, and I think I'm pointing out that these parts only go one way up. Anywho, and clunk them in. I love that brake disc. I really do love that brake disc. I still can't figure out which kit that's from. Well, no idea what that was about. <laughs> you can see again, just very, very lightly going over, try and keep some of that pre shading. Uh, even though you're not going to get to see a great deal of that part. Because that's where the, the neck assembly is. And the rest of it is covered by the chin of old chicken bonds. And I can't quite show you because the airbrush is in the way. Um, I'm actually doing some really fine lines at that part. I'm not too sure what I'm showing you there either. Again, going really lightly to try and keep hold of some of that pre shade. Uh, can you make out those five venti things on the the sides? Can anybody help me out with that? Are those exhausts? Of some description. Those look like exhausts as well. They're familiar. That's from another kit. I'm sure it is. Some kind of German tank, possibly. You know, at this point, I'm pointing out that uh, the flak veiling shield goes into the larger holes. The smaller holes are for some kind of hose pipe type things. 
Now, oh, chewy with the emo hair. I can't wait to start him. Um, there you go, there's a flat veiling shield. I did have a problem. One of them fits beautifully and the other one doesn't. So I'm hoping that painting them will close the gaps up a little bit. On that side is the snug fit. Um, at this point I think I'm talking about the hip. Yeah, there you go. That's roughly where the hips will line up. There you go, there's the, the hose pipes. Now, the reference material I've got, they're all the same colour as the body, but I'm going to ignore that and go slightly darker just for something interest. Uh, something interest? Something interesting to look at. So it's not all just one great big grey lump. Um, and they've dotted about all over the place, those, those pipes. And I'm actually in the process of deciding whether to leave those cannons as they are. One of those snaps off, I think it was that one. I just can't remember. Oh, that's the hand gesture then. Um, so be careful with those when you're building it. It comes in about four different pieces and all of a sudden there's a click and you've got a wonky barrel. I didn't like that. Uh, no idea what that was about. Now then, these shafts and splines, if you look at the ends, they've got little tabs on them. And like I say, if you've got the experience, it might be worth having a look at whether you can trim those away so you can actually pose the model properly. Um, I'm about to show. I can't remember which way around they go, so I'll go back to the instructions, I think. Talk much yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll show in a minute um, there's a pair of holes that the tabs line up into inside like I said there's not a great deal of movement as you can see it literally gives you two settings I think we get it here So you've got the tabs there, possibly you can trim them off. There you go. There's the holes for the tabs inside. So you've literally got two poses. I'm looking at that now, I think yes, you can trim them tabs off. I might try that later on. Hmm. Yep, I'll try that and I shall give you an update in the next video. Now, for me personally, the good news is it's Easter weekend um, whilst I'm actually doing this. It's Good Friday now and hopefully I can get a couple of days on this now. Um, I'll really crack on with it. So keep your eyes peeled over the next couple of days. I'll hopefully have a part three and possibly a part four up by Sunday or Monday. There we go, more boring painting. Again, trying to keep hold of that pre-shading. I do like that colour. And don't forget the the collars there. On those little stubs. I think it's the same on the inside of the the hip on the legs. There's definitely a tab there. I think it's the same on the inside of the hip where there's a couple of holes for the tabs. Uh, like I say, I'll update you as to whether you can trim them off or not. And I've no idea what I'm explaining there. And here's 
the the neck which goes in there like that and then you get the underside of chicken bones which has that collar if you don't throw it away oh dear <laughs> So there's a couple of holes and tabs and things like that that line up and then that goes under there like that which then fits into that socket and then thing in the hole and fully rotatable I've decided at this point that that's going to be a completely different shade of grey so that's the one I've been using for the body this is one I'll be using for the neck piece and detailing at some other stage and I'll be using this one as well good old barley grey I love that colour I think I'm going through that's the pre-shade colour that I used and these two colours are for the um, the pilots and the crew or whatever you call them Is he gone? Do you know it's really difficult to try to remember what you said at the time? Uh, I filmed this a week ago. There you go. There's a pilot. I've still got a little bit of work to clean him up. Um, there's that ridiculous seam there on his legs. As you can see there, there's still that tab on his boot that I need to take care of. Even though you won't see that. Um, so that seam on the thigh is actually hidden when you plonk him in. <laughs> Same with the boot, you can't see the boots anymore, but I know it's there and it'll annoy me. It's quite a basic pose as well. But as you can see here, you've got that tiny little viewport, so you're not going to be able to see much anyway. But it does look really good. And then there's the, the nice left hand side interior wall. It's stunning detail. That's the back wall. And I'll be concentrating more on the, the how to on this section of it. Because um, I'll be doing all kinds of new techniques that I've never tried before. Uh, I'll talk you through that in the next video. That's roughly the view you'll have. So I'm going to be making these exceptionally lighter than possibly I should be doing so you can actually see them. Same with that wall. So as you can see, you're not going to be able to see much of it. So I want to make that as light as possible so you can actually have something to look through and look at. That's definitely a gearbox. I think that is some kind of filter from one of the Tigers or the later Panzers the King Tiger or something like that now still model air it's already pre-thinned for you and it's beautiful for brush painting with as you're about to see now because um, it's already pre-thinned it's ridiculously runny as you can see as it flows away with itself I love brushing this stuff, I really do it goes on so easily now this colour shouldn't actually be a metallic colour according to every source of reference I have it's a really dark nasty grey but I want something that's going to contrast with the rest of the body and give you a little bit of interest even though you're not going to see much of it it's there it helps if you show the people what you're doing, Tony. There you go. Look how ridiculously smooth that goes on. So that's one of my little tips for you. If you do need to do any brush painting, if you can, and if you have any model air knocking about, use that. It's great stuff. Show the people what you're doing. Thank you.
and that's literally with one brush load. Great stuff. So that will be receiving some weathering later on. And that's roughly about it for this video. Thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, stay tuned for part three, which will be hopefully up very, very soon. Um, any questions or comments, by all means, leave one below. Thanks, guys.